All right. Hello, everybody. Um, please let me know if in the chat if you have everything all right in the audio, since uh, I don't want you know echo and strange thing that usually happen on this channel. In the meantime, I'm about to prepare the board, so we will start very very soon. Everything okay? Perfect. Okay. Well, so what to say? I'm finishing up to prepare the board. So as you can see, uh, I missed the insulation around the socket, the pot, and then we go. Let me put it this way. So you can see what I'm doing. All right. So first thing insulation you know that i use diapers senior diapers what i'm going to do now is to cut this to absorb the condensation around the socket area then we place the pot and we go down so are you all right everything fine how is starting this 2021? Better than the other one? More GPU, more CPU? The goal of today is very straightforward. So what I want to do is to check if this CPU is a good one in terms of FCLK. So infinity fabric lock. The Zen 2 and Zen 3 have a big issue with cold. Even if you have the fastest uh, CPU in the world, but it doesn't like the cold, you're basically not going to do anything. Almost not in the first positions. So you need a lucky chip. And then as well, you need a chip that needs to be suitable, let's say reliant, to extreme low temps. Because if you can go low enough, you can not raise the frequency. And if you don't have FCLK, well, the score sucks. This is simple as that. So my previous chip was like uh, 1400 megahertz at FCLK and with a lot of cold issues. So I was uh, <clears throat> always rebooting, a lot of issues. And when you have a chip nasty like that, you cannot make it to the top 10. So yeah, I need a, I need to find some chips like this. Yes, is the iodine. So the iodine is the one that, uh, let's say, govern the, the CLK. So the, that chip is very sensitive to extreme low temperature. Um, so the, the Zen 1 and Zen Plus uh, wasn't wasn't like this. You can go all the maximum temperature you can reach, and it's fine. This one is a bit nasty, so you have to uh, tweak the voltages, the shock voltage that create heat, and that heat will uh, uh, get the the I/O chiplet hotter. So that's the only way to do it. But even sometimes, if I use like 1.5, that is crazy for the shock, is not uh, enough to fight the cold. So I really hope that this chip will at least allows me to go to the maximum temperature I can, and then we will work our, our way up uh, with clocks. Uh, there's a pretty nice chip out there, so it's difficult. Ciao Roberto. So, okay. Now, um, I usually prepare an insulation like this to avoid thing that water around the socket and then with the small ones to fill the holes. Because water is really bad. And since we have to, we probably have to do a lot of reboots. So a lot of reboots, it means as well that we maybe we can go down to 192 
and then we have to go back uh, to uh, less colder temperature and then go down again. All this process makes a lot of condensation. And a lot of condensation, well, it's game over since I, I have to dry the board and it's not good. So now <clears throat> you see that um, we have a good insulation. It's time to use the kingpin paste. And then we can start work our FCLK testing. It is boring since um, you have to go on extreme cold to test this. You cannot understand on water. Even with a my cascade the, that can go at minus 100, I can run full FCLK at minus 100. The problem is after 132, 135, So I think uh, this for frequency is good since uh, my previous one <clears throat> was like uh, <clears throat> uh, 6 gigahertz on single core and I think it was like 5.5, 1.6 in multi-core. This, this should be better. So if we don't have cold issue, we may have like a top 10 CPU or even better. The problem is that you don't know with the Ryzen what's happening. And a lot of chip have called issues. It makes a lot of waste in liquid nitrogen and time. Yeah, it's not easy to to find the right one to, to compete. So I'm going to test this one. If it's good enough, I can try. If not, I have to sell it by another and so on until I find the, the golden one. So I take a lot of time and lately a bit of luck since they are sold out everywhere. I'm very good with F5 to refresh the browser, but you know. Okay. So we have the paste and now we have the pot. I don't have much time today, so I want to try to be as quick as possible. But we will have fun anyway. Okay. This is the new revision of the Kingpin T-Rex. The new one, basically, the base is almost the same. Change this piece that originally was like this, and I had to bend the rods a mess and now I can use the rods in a normal way without bending or something dangerous to a proper mount so at least we have a, a better mounting it's been a couple of months that I'm using this and it's very good and if you are novice to this thing and you want to try dry ice this is a it's very nice with dry ice too so. Yeah, this is the boring part, but you know. I tried to prepare everything in advance, but like um, one hour ago, I was I was looking for the new CPU and I wasn't able to find it. So basically I lost that CPU and uh, well, I had to search all the dungeon and it was in the mess right there, but I spent like 30 minutes looking for the CPU and I wasn't able to find it. So I was already thinking to tell you, hey guys, I have a problem. I I lost the CPU. <laughs> Pretty weird. So but then here we are. The I think the internal structure changed for the older revision. Since so uh, look at this. This is the other one. So it's, I think I got a revision that is very similar. I don't know if you can see it. It's basically, I think it's the same. Since probably this was a, like a mid revision. And uh, yeah, the same. Anyway. 
was good earlier and it was good now as well since uh, I last week I used this pot with the 3090 keeping because I'm waiting for the the adapter for the 3000 series and on a GPU is pretty nice good temperature control I don't know if it was um, with a proper mounting since I had to just put it up I don't think so but regarding temperature control pretty nice drag racing sounds fun but you are doing you're like driving or you're going to watch it I think I have some goblins that mess with my CPUs a leprechaun because I lived in Ireland for like three years maybe one of those little creatures followed me and sometimes he's hiding my things so when I find the maximum frequency yes so when I find the maximum FCLK frequency I have to tune the memory so if we are in the range of like 1600 I can go C10 so cast 10 up to I think 1700 something like this and then if we are super super lucky that we can have like 1700 1800 uh, something like this we have to go to CL11 but the, the primary timing are not my main concern since uh, when you go very low with the sub timings this is the key then I can mess with the primary but the most important is the is the is the CLK so. I'm drag racing CPU yes of course I am this is a very extreme racing still a race we are competing and out there there are really really nice CPU so now that AMD took the lead again on CPU performance all the overclock in the world they are buying AMD to break records so it's getting harder there's more competition but you know I like competition more challenging less boring so more live stream to do to try to beat the latest record and so on so once again as you can see I'm insulating a lot because today we have a lot of restart to do so the more I insulate the less the risk that we are going to lose time and uh, dry the board uh, stuff like that Ryzen 5 2600 memory is Patriot blackout okay join my Discord server we have we are a lot of people a lot of really nice people that we can try to help you out so we can tune we can do everything just join the Discord server so you can explain better tell us your kit number we will find a solution we always do there are also a lot of very skilled guys in the in the Discord that can help you if I can't. Usually I can. So let's cover the RGB because those are uh, RGB sticks and the RGB is doing bad. So if I cover the RGB, we gain 100 megahertz. I'm pretty sure about that. What do you say? No RGB. <clears throat> RGB is good for FPS. You have like plus 100 FPS, but for overclocking, no, no way. RGB is bad. It distracts me. And it makes the dragon angry and hungry, both. I think it's like one month that I, I I didn't bring food for him. So today he's pretty hungry. Okay. 
that's part of the big insulation. You know that I made a mistake now because I didn't test if it's working or not. And I don't have the power cable too, so be back. All right, let's see if this thing is working or not. I have to dismantle everything. Yeah, it's working. Great. Fun error, of course. So, in the meantime, what I'm going to do now is to well, let's go down a bit. Come on. So we start at um, 1600 with a very um, easy going timing since uh, I want that the FCAK is not affected by RAM instability in the first place. We start with multiplier at 40 just to keep the LN2 consumption low. Um, what else? As you can see here, this is a very, let's say, easy going profile C14. Uh, Sometimes it's tight, but not that tight. I remove some limits just in case. We start uh, with low voltage and then we have to raise the soft voltage. I think we can go up to 1.5. 1.5 is a lot, it generates a lot of heat. I think. Uh, I may lose some like five degree as total uh, uh, lowest temperature, but I can hit the IO die, the chiplet, and we may gain instability in the fiber. So this is the last resort to have a higher FCLK. That is the the thing we need to do to be able to compete. So. Let's boot into Windows. Voltage memory, I think it was like 1.4 and something, 1.5. Now I go back and check it. But it's a, it's a profile that I use for daily, so it's a very relaxed profile. You, for daily, I use like 3800 MHz, 1900 FCLK, but it's a daily profile, so is stable, is tested like 20,000% of mem test. So it's a very stable profile. We still have RGB, huh? yeah, this thing doesn't want to go away. More insulation. Yeah, the first test is a bit nasty since you have to do a lot of restarts. When I know the CPU better, I can do like one shot, one kill. I know the frequency, I know the voltages, and it's easier. Just I load the profile and we go for the score. But now it's still a discovery process. Now I go back to the BIOS so you can see it. Safe for shock. I don't know. You don't for daily use. You don't need more than one point one, even less. I think my thirty eight hundred megahertz profile was like one point zero twenty five or something like this. So you don't you don't need the shock voltage for daily. It's only for extreme overclocking. You, you have to you. you you won't even go into out of the safe zone since sometimes the shock voltage less is better for stability. Let's place this thing in our way.
black screen oh, yes. about your memory sorry yeah, i think there was um an issue with my stream okay so we have 35 degrees here i think to check is that we have a similar temperature on the cpu in this case the pot is at 35 but the socket is higher because i'm using the kingpin inferno so it's a socket heater so it's normal that we have a slightly higher temperature right now so now I go back to the bios i activate the ln2 mode and we start going down with them um, with the temperature okay Elenchu mode allows me to go higher with some voltages like memory voltage, CPU voltage. placed BIOS closed loop well a uh, phase change we already have those type of cooling here over there we have a cascade phase change two stage there I have one single stage. I think the gas is, um, you said, um, R134. No. Now I'm using this one for the phase change. This is R404A. I think I'll show you this one. This is good for phase changing cooling. Okay, so I think the system is overheating, probably. <laughs> Let's start putting some juice. So, Karu, thank you. Well, I tried to explain myself. I didn't, didn't thought to be a teacher, but well, I have something that I must, uh, I may explain better than others. So, okay, before it's too late, I have to set the fans to full speed. Okay, so the dragon can breathe. It's a bit noisy, then I will turn it down. Okay, so this is a lot. Let's start with one point thirty five. Yes, um, I start one point two first. So we go we go down a bit and then I do some restart and I raise gradually the CLK. 
and the sock voltage. Then we touch the others. So first I want to check if the mount is properly done. So I should have like a delta of five degrees since I have the inferno. So if I have like five degrees here, I should have like 10 maximum with the CPU 10. So. Okay, again, core temp is the best thing to use. So we have 23 there, 11 here. Considering that the, the Kingpin heater is making a lot of heat, especially at ambient temp, it's fine. So we have 21 and 9. Let's see if it scales in a good way. So negative six and nine. Yeah, okay. Seven, six, uh, okay, seems fine. Okay, now, um, okay, this is useless. I'm going to reboot sometimes. Since every time we go down, we go down in temperature, the motherboard needs to train again a bit. Need to adjust for temperature. Like um, the one that I think that the one that is in Intel is like Tirefi. There's some values that change in the BIOS with the cold. So it's normal to have values restart. And if you have the voltage set correctly, you can restart at low temperature without risking of cold boot bugs. So the system hangs if it's too cold. But if we manage to set everything correctly, we should be able to do full pot, uh, restarts, uh, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is to restart again and raise the shock voltage. Now the system is unresponsive. So we might have an issue now. I cannot uh, shut down the system. This is, is a bad sign. So I have to go into the BIOS and check with some voltage tweaks if we can make it right. Maybe it's the BIOS. Since this is the latest beta one. And you know, sometimes ASUS like mess the things up a bit. But, okay, now we have a, a blue screen and the system is like at default, which is not normal. So, well, we will fix that. Okay, at least we are booting. So now I'm negative 50. I can raise the FCLK to 1.35. And before saving, I go down to like negative 100. <coughs> now the dragon is quiet, but uh, when we are in full pot, you will see a lot of smoke down here. And it's pretty cool, literally. So now we go down, let's say negative 90 or something like that. Because messing with the sock voltage, you may kill your chip. 
the memory controller. So SOC is a, is a nasty one. But fortunately, if you want to overclock the memory, you just need 1.1 or even less. LM2 depends. There are some guys that uh, buy one liter for 25 cents. Here is pretty expensive. It's like uh, three, four euro per liter. Very expensive. And by the way, I'm looking to make um, a liquid nitrogen generator for with a cryo cooler, a sterling cryo cooler. So I have this project in mind. Maybe I can do that in, in a couple of months if I find one used in eBay. But I will post some video about that. My crazy project so okay let's restart like this and we will see if everything is fine or not yes i will tune that voltages later so this one is like 0 0.95 but I want to see in auto first, since this BIOS sometimes is a bit uh, strange. So I can put a value and I can change it. And I saw that with the 5800X, sometimes in auto, I had no code bug. With setting the value, the value manually, I had code bug. So we have to do some trial and error. So <clears throat> this BIOS is not very good, but it's the only one we have. Okay, so far so good, but now at negative hundred is not uh, dangerous for the chip to have uh, cold bugs. So we go down a bit until we have a crash, and then we start from there. Maybe I can go full pot like this, maybe not. So we are approaching 110. Now the dragon is breathing with some dragon line action. Cool, isn't it? <coughs> okay, we can start to benchmark something just to keep the the chip warm so the first test is um i use cinebench since it's fast enough i can measure the the efficiency a bit to see if we have uh, any bug in the multiplier and so on So minus 130. This is uh, um, a good limit, since this is where we start having issue if the FCLK is not good enough. So if you can cross this limit, it's already a good thing. Just to show you. So we are at uh, 1600 megahertz for the CLK, negative 140 and everything seems fine so i'm not touching cpu frequency now since i want to go down with the um, with the cpu temperature and not heating it too much so so far so good I think um, I'm going to use like a, a membrane, a nitrogen membrane separator first to, uh, to obtain, uh, let's say, more pure nitrogen out of the air. Since I don't want, I don't want oxygen here because if we have a spark or something is is dangerous. And then when I have nitrogen, I said more pure nitrogen, I will use a, a sterling cryo cooler. So I think it's like a helium pump resonating and. I just need a negative uh, 200, so 77 Kelvin. Uh, there's also much bigger one, 
but well, let's see what I can find on eBay. All right, so 150 and still going. No, okay. We have the first issue. So 1600 at 155. So at this time, I have to go into the BIOS and raise the shock voltage. So, so far it's not one of the wars that I've tried. So maybe we can try to solve it with some voltage tweaking. I will leave those three voltages for the last one. So now I'm going to push a bit the sock and try again. Then if we cannot do anything with the shock voltage, we tune the other one. But I don't I don't trust this BIOS too much because I saw that some voltages are all over the place. Yes, that's why I want a separator. So I want to separate the nitrogen from the all the other gases, so oxygen mostly, because I don't want to have liquid oxygen around around here is pretty flammable. So I want a nitrogen membrane separator, so all the air intake will I will get only the nitrogen part of the air. So Okay, so let's go down again. I have at 1.4 shock voltage now, and it was like 155, the issue. So 160, and it's still going good. 163, working. I'm going to warm up a bit the socket area with the chine bench so maybe 1.4 was um, uh, the good tweak maybe we have to raise it we will see so 170 and we are still going there still working so this is bad <laughs> we just crashed well 180 so probably with a bit more of voltage we may get what we want if we don't get a good bug like now okay so second issue when i i'm too cold i have issue to reboot the motherboard so now I have the code AA, it's a random code, we are restarting, and 07. 07, it means uh, fabric issues. So we are restarting, I don't know if you can see, you cannot see it. It's looping, and I'm back again. This is a good sign. At least it's not the worst chip in the world. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So now, let's try one point. Okay, maybe this will get us to full point. Yes, I will have to prepare that carefully, but it's still early. First, I need to find the, the Stirling uh, cryo cooler. It is the most expensive and hard part to find. If I can find that, then I will finish what is around. So, and I think I will take some time to find one. I know people that bought like one, a good one for like two, three hundred dollars, but now they are only like one K, uh, it's too much. So, okay, now um, we try to go back down again. We are pretty close. So,
170, 180, we are still doing okay. Freeze again, so 181 is nasty. So I'm going to raise the shock voltage again to 1.45 and we do this again. Good thing is seems that I don't have much issue with cold booting. Oh, the bastard. I hate that camera. Every time that the PC freeze, the camera froze as well. And this this is nuts. It doesn't have any you know explanation at all. But if you follow my live stream, you know that this happens. Okay, fixed. Now, so more shock. We can go up to 1.5 if needed, but I would like to go to stay low because more shock, it means I cannot reach lo the lowest possible temperature. And it's good to find a good balance. Camera needs more voltage, yes. We overclock the camera a bit. Oh yes, we have the the nice Windows thing. It's okay. The good thing is I don't have cold boot uh, bug. But that is the most nasty thing of Zen 3. Sometimes I had to work the system to negative 29 and it takes a lot. Plus I have to go back down again and it's a weight of nitrogen. My FCLK was running at 1600. The RAM was 3200 megahertz since it's double data rate. And it's pretty nice for extreme overclocking. We are not there. We are not stable yet. But we are getting there, so patience. Let's see if you are lucky enough now. One thing I can try is to raise a bit the CPU voltage as well. So let's see if it this helps. Maybe, maybe not. Hundred and seventy, a bit more. Nope. Hundred and eighty. Okay. So back to the BIOS and let's tweak the other voltages. Going to check my notes for a sec. Now I'm going to change a bit the voltages. I need to 
remember the correct value So now I'm going to raise VDDG and then SOC. Let's try like this first. So then, if not working, we can try to raise the sock a bit, or we touch the other, the other voltage down there. I mean, we need to we need to play a bit, since every CPU is different. We have to find the right value. Okay, VDDP needs higher at 0 0.95. So we may have an issue now there. Some BIOS push it too much. Some BIOS like this one, not, not too much. Every time is a mess. Okay, so 176, still doing good. No, crash again. 180 so I'm going back change the other voltage because if you want to benchmark you need FCLK to have performance let's say in in Cinebench R15 Last year, when we break the record, and I think I'm still the first position, um, going from 29, uh, so with 1466 megahertz to 1633 megahertz, we gain more la more than 200 points, or roughly 200 points in Cinebench. So from 2900 to almost 3100. So FCLK means a lot. At, at the same frequency, FCLK change a lot in extreme overclocking benchmark and in daily. So, yes, that is the, the issue. So, leaving it on auto, the older BIOS was pushing it too much. This is pushing it too low. Also, I don't trust this either. So, let's try with full manual. Um, let's see if I can well Just in case. Well, let's see. The voltage uh, depends. Yes, maybe one volt and zero fifty. Who knows? 
sometimes high is not the solution because on extreme temperature uh, is not good to do too much that voltage so the VDDP this one in extreme overclocking usually is like 0 0.95 if you go higher sometimes it's worse so when you go below zero is is weird everything changed when you are extreme low everything is different no still still the issue so now i'm trying to go to 1.5 with the sock and let's see if we can get this out I might try to play a bit with Proco DT. Usually, I always fix with voltage. I never had uh, any major issue with Proco DT, but I can try. Why not? Can freeze again? Yes, bastard. Okay, let's try like this and then I can try to play with the other one but now I'm going to if it's not working like this I'm going to try with your method so let's see thing is hot seventy eight no okay so I try last time with one point 52 and then I try to mess a bit with um, yes uh, I have access to VDP let's take a look Yeah, sub zero mess a lot with prop propriety of the components. Um, so sometimes you just you have to play with the uh, with the settings until you find the one that it works. Sometimes it's not even uh, it's like how can I say? It's sometimes if something is weird but it works. So it's another word. When you go below 130, 150, everything change, and something that on on ambient temp makes sense in extreme overclock it doesn't and it is like it is okay so yes i will try last time with enough soft voltage 
and then we will do the other things. The Asus thing, this board have a lot of values. They are more or less the same thing. I think is it should be. I'm not sure. It should be more related to the double CC, CCX CCD. I usually uh, tweak them on pair. So. Deck using at 173 is what we need right now. Windows, there's nothing wrong. I'm only sub zero. That's it. I know the issue. At least we don't have cold boot bug. This is my worst enemy. Because when you have cold boot bug, you have to warm everything up and you create a lot of condensation. And if you create condensation, it is a mess. Did I speak too soon? Yes, I spoke too soon. We have cold boot bug, I think. That's not good. Now, L2 BIOS just tweak a bit the voltage. Uh, I think the L2 BIOS do, well, extend the, the, the maximum CPU voltage, the maximum memory voltage, and uh, it start like um, at default with 1.32, 35 with the SOC. But I don't think it does much more than that. Actually, sometimes without the LN2 mode, I don't have cold bug, but I cannot raise to, uh, anymore the, the, the CPU voltage, uh, more than 1.7, 1.6, something like this. So sometimes it's the BIOS that is, is really bad. You, I think you can do that. I once did for mistake, but if you run, uh, things that uh, are very heavy on the memory controller, you will fry it. So it's not good. That is an issue. So now I have to warm everything up. Oh, I hate that. This is the worst part of the session. And I don't want to warm it too fast, since if I do it too fast, I create condensation. And we don't want that. Let's try in safe mode, if you are lucky enough. Yes, I think we have to go all the way up to negative 30 degrees. Not to burn the to burn the camera. Yes, the, it can get very hot up here.
No, still bugged. this anyway what did you miss you miss that uh, we were at like uh, 1600 megahertz uh, fclk uh, negative 180 and the system restart so it's not as strong as i want but we can lower a bit the frequency in case we cannot go past it sometimes you can tweak the voltage all you want but if the chip is nasty it's nasty and the only way is to reduce the fclk and play with the frequency, but we will see. No, it's not game over. I just need to warm out, a, warm up a bit the um, the board. But uh, I'm afraid to damage the camera, so I have to do like this. <laughs> Theory, we should be able to boot soon. I know this is boring, but it's part of the game. Yes, I can reduce with this sock again and but I would have preferred to have higher sock voltage than lower FCLK. This is nasty as bug. I think you have to, to push higher again. This should work, in theory. Sometimes it's just the virus. Wow. Yeah, this is um, it's custom made. Uh, one of my teammates, Italian Extreme Modern, check on Facebook, on Instagram made the chassis and then i put all the the things inside i did the rigid tubing and everything but it was made by s samod uh you can find it italian extreme modder um is my modding team i'm the overclocker in a team of a modder it's weird but you know, weird thing happens yeah they're very good So, uh, this is weird. Maybe we have fried everything, you know? May happen. Okay, let's try to power down and power up. So OD again, that is bad. Maybe, maybe it's game over, who knows? Maybe I... Hmm. 
sometimes it's the board that doesn't really like the call maybe the cpu maybe it's dead you never know usually at this time the board should have restarted already so maybe we kill the cpu maybe it was like best thing to die No, I don't think we have condensation, so everything is super, super insulated. So it's not a condensation issue. Maybe it's a CPU related issue. Okay, everything is booting again. Yes, so we are we have to go above zero to get the motherboard started again Oof, i hate that I really, since now as you can see we have water we have water all around the place no but i hate vaseline vaseline is is useless i have senior diapers this is the key vaseline is a mess and after some times the board is like um it's doing bad since um, you have to clean it with like an ultrasonic cleaner is a mess i do with the diapers and i don't have any issue at all i can bench for like five hours six hours without any condensation at all okay so now um this is the point we left off um We can do one thing. Um, I don't like pushing too much those voltages. Sometimes the PLL at 0 0.2, 0 0.3 helps. So I don't want to push the shock voltage too much as well. Let's try with this and lower FCLK. And then uh, uh maybe we go back again so let's do a, a step back and see if we can go like this because i'm also keen to see the maximum frequency so uh, i can fine tune the fclk later if we can go full pot like this it's already a big win since uh, it's not easy to find a 1600 uh, fclk full pot chip so now we are going back again, maybe, <laughs> if the port wants to start. But sometimes BIOS, BIOS are really, really bad. We have another issue now that is unusual. Let's see if I can show you some error codes. Here we have the 21. Never, never have a 21. So this is completely random. Zero 07 usually is FCLK issues. So. I'll fix that later okay so we have to fix this stupid uh, thing right now so probably wasn't the call at all it was another thing okay reset Okay, if I reset the BIOS, everything works. So there's something that my saved BIOS didn't like. 
Anyway, we will get that fixed as always. I was hoping to finish earlier, but I think I'm going long even today. And as I told you, sometimes voltages usually I, I like to to use manual voltages usually with a stable BIOS, but sometimes it just doesn't want to work. So okay. Let's try this way. Let's start lower, way lower. Let's do like this to see if we can have a full pot at least. And then we can play with FCLK a bit later. Because I'm, I'm really want to know if this chip can do good frequency. Because if we cannot get good frequency, it's a waste of time uh, playing with the FCLK. So you have to be both FCLK and frequency. If, if we don't have the two, it's pretty useless as extreme overclocking, high competition chip. It's good to have some fun, but at the end, I need this chip to be able to compete. And if I cannot, because I don't have frequency or I don't have a CLK, out and another one. So. Sometimes raising the PLL helps generate heat. If the chip generates heat, we have uh, a chance to counterattack the cold bug. I know that sometimes it doesn't really make sense, the thing we do in extreme overclocking, but uh, we must do something to correct another thing so. Well, so far we are stuck in a stupid bios issue i have to to make it a bit warmer so Okay, let's see if we can go back to our operating system. So now we are at uh, 1500 megahertz FCLK. Uh, in theory, I should be able to go full pot. If we manage to go full pot, we play a bit with the frequency to see how far we can go, if it's a good chip or not. And then after we found the maximum CPU frequency, we go back to FCLK and we play a bit again with FCLK, if we can push a bit the No, I'm Italian. I'm I'm living in Spain, seven years now, but I'm Italian. So let's prepare everything for this noise is because there's some ice inside the dragon.
Let me remove some ice. Oh, we will have a lot of noise. Damn ice. Well, I will check that later. Is that too noisy? Okay, here we go. Now we should be able to do full pot, in theory. Oh, I think one piece of the fan broke. Cool. So... I think we have to... I have to fix that. Or I will drive you nuts. Okay, nice fixed. Now back to overclocking. Hundred and forty something. And we bugged out again. So it's not the FCRK anymore. So back to basic again. Let's raise the voltage. More suck. Uh oh. Weird. So usually going down a bit was enough to push me from 180 to negative 192, but maybe just doesn't like the cold. Because we cannot maybe it can can be another thing, not the FCLK. Who knows? Maybe it's the core. It, it should should not. But when you work to the extreme, everything can happen. Okay, let's try again.
So yes, the first uh, LN2 session with a CPO is, is boring and uh, sometimes can be a bit worse. Maybe we have the right voltages right now. Yeah, I think we made it. Okay, full pot. So this is the um, the setting that I use, that usually I use, and it works every time. Okay, so anyway, as you can see, we have 185. It's not 192 since with all that soft voltage, the chip is too hot that I cannot reach maximum uh, lowest temperature. So. But it's fine. Seven degrees doesn't really change much. So now we go down, we go up with the frequency, and then we can work again on the CLK. So okay. Now I use Cinebench. So we do we check the multi-threading capability of this CPU. In full pot, and then we move uh, to something else. And then we recharge. Okay, so. 1.65 for starters, 5.3, this should be really easy, I'm just checking uh, how the bot, the fastest in Cinebench, just to have a rule of thumb to know how far we can go. Okay, so very good chip are at uh, 6 gigahertz and a bit more. So we should be able to do, I think at least 5.7, something like this. Okay, so okay, let's push a bit more. It was my last. 3950X was really bad on the second CCD. I wasn't even able to get like 5.3, 5.4, and the second CCD was dead. The other one was like 5.9. A pity, and I wasn't able to compete last year for that. And I didn't have much time or money to, to invest binning. So this time I will try to, you know, try one, sell it, buy another one, all the kind of stuff. So 5600 megahertz. Okay. Still doing good. Now I do baby step.
Okay, 56, 50, let's say 57. Fifty seven, okay. Uh, okay, okay. And is that a thing? But to be in, in the top ten we need at least fifty nine. So let's go try for fifty eight. And like make it or break it. So it seems we have fifty eight hundred megahertz which is nice and now we do a bit of baby steps since i think we are approaching we can do a bit more voltage like this and now chicken clocking a bit not a chicken clocker but when we are reaching that line we must i don't want to restart again having issues So for Cinebench, 1.75 is okay. I saw that there was a big drop in the voltage and probably I will need to raise a bit the, the load level calibration. But it's weird since all the chip that I tried so far, LC level three was enough. And with this specific one, I saw that the voltage was messing a bit up and down. And it's kind of weird. No, I don't want to raise the voltage. I want to set a better low level load line calibration since the voltage was like 1.74 and it went down to 1.66. And that is an issue, of course. So now back to the BIOS, LC, LC level 4. And we go back again. Because I don't think it's a frequency. We are not yet at the limit, but we have some delivery issue. So this may fix it. Liquor chip, maybe. But, well, I would like to see how far we can go. What was the last one? 5.8, 5.825, something like this. So it's a good chip. You can call me Max. This is my name. Everybody call me Max. Okay, so back to full pot. Crash, random crash. Let's reboot. Going back to sub ambient, uh, sub, uh, sub uh, well, below zero, above zero, and go down again is not good for the motherboard. I really wish that we don't have any condensation issue, but so far it seems everything is fine. I think as well the BIOS is not helping at all. I think the record was made with the Crosshair 8 Dark. The Dark is made for Zen 3. So maybe they have an advantage, not sure, but I would like to try the the dark version, but you know, a lot of money. Mm. 
Okay, we are back. Almost full pot. Yeah. So, okay, BGA card is not supported. This is weird. This is really weird. I think as well the BIOS is a bit messed up. Let me save this one. Okay, so... Yeah, definitely that the BIOS is not the best version ever. Yes, the first position, safe disk, uh, well, is an amazing overclocker, and then, well, they have very nice CPU, so... My best wish is to make the podium. In the first place, with those kind of guy in place, almost impossible. Okay, we are full pot again. And where is my mouse? <laughs> Okay, um, I don't know if it's a USB port, the system. Okay, let's wait. Um, Usually no, because I already run these settings uh, with the 5800X. And with the 5800X, I can do full pot uh, at 13 megahertz for CLK. Um, uh, no, sorry, it was like um, 1600 megahertz. But uh, I had no issue at all running full pot with that CPU. So this is a CPU issue. So I, I was able to, um, if I put my 5800X now, I can, I load the profile, we go full pot, and we bench at 6 gigahertz. But, so, it's not uh, um, a board issue, it's a CPU issue. I'm not too much into lapping since uh, I don't know. Maybe you gain a couple of degrees, but does it really matter? And then if you have to do the an RMA, you're done. So I definitely do not lap any CPU, um, and I do not delete as well. I would like to get the 4750G, but uh, well, I'm a bit uh, tight on budget lately because of this. This toy, this toy, eat all the budget left. So I have to wait a bit. Yes, the King Ping 3090. No, now we we crashed. So we have called bug again. Weird. Very weird. Let me think. It's not FCLK. It's a niche, it's a voltage issue. That is naked. I like it naked.
So what we can do? Let's try like this. It's a pretty nice car. In the meantime, I can show you. Lot of VRMs. I don't think it could it can run crisis. It's too powerful. Okay. Okay, I think we are back. Yeah. What's the salt voltage? Okay, we are back in the game. So we pick up where we left off. It was 58. 58. Uh, the King Ping, uh, I think I was at um, 22 and 50, something like this. So 2.25 gigahertz. But the King Ping have a really custom made BIOS that is not public. They gave me. And. Um, if you use the normal LM2 BIOS with the card, it, it, it throttled. Uh, I had to use a custom-made specific BIOS, and the card went from 500 watts to 600 watts, and not throttling, and the score was like skyrocketing. But that card is a bit um, difficult to tune so far. So after I finish this uh, nitrogen, I will have a recharge. I will pre-test the board. And I think I will need 30 to 50 liters to get the board no uh, better. And then we can schedule another live stream where we can do some 3D. Maybe with this chip and the kingpin to do some, I don't know, fast strike and something like that. So now, well, my main concern was the voltage. So let's see if we have a stable voltage first, and then we push again for the frequency. Let's see if we can have a stable one first and then we push it's still dropping a lot this sample drops drops a lot but i don't want to push too much the voltage let's see sometimes a bit of the drop is, is fine and is better to keep the temperature lower. Okay, so um, let's push a bit for the frequency. Oh, 
Okay, 58.50, that is nice. Um, okay, let's do some chicken clocking more. At least it's not a bad, bad chip. This will probably work fine for 3D. Okay, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 58.75, 
Okay, so this FCLK is working. Nice. I want to push a bit more the voltage and the clock to see if we can gain something. No, okay. 58.50 is the limit. And now we go up again with FCLK until we find a good one. Well, I don't think it's dishonest since uh, I'm selecting the chip for extreme overclocking. And actually, the one that I want to sell can do a 1900 FCLK at ambient, and this one cannot. So for a daily use, the one that I'm selling is better than this one. Um, because I just need uh, resilience to extreme cold. So. I may sell a chip that does perform extremely well in ambient temp, but is bad for extreme overclocking. So, and then uh, a Ryzen like this, it will probably use at um, at stock. So, the silicon quality is not a thing for a Ryzen that usually is used at stock uh, stock speed. It's not like the Intel that can overclock a bit more than the other. If I am going to sell, like in the Harderbot forum, I will say everything, uh, like cool bug uh, issues, uh, frequency, and then it's up to the pe to the person that want to buy it. But an, an average user, like a, I don't know, a 3D modelist, uh, a gamer, is a good chip. They don't need to do extreme overclocking. So. I think is is last of their concern, especially if they can find it like less than MSRP. Since I'm going to send to sell it a bit less than the actual price. I mean it's a bargain. So okay, so we have food pot again, and it seems the issue before wasn't the FCLK, it was another thing in the bio, so I, I don't know. But so far it's doing good. So I don't even bother to test it in Cinebench. I just want to do some restart and raise the FCLK and see if we can keep rising. Because maybe it's not the fastest one in multi-core, but if we have a good FCLK, I can compensate other CPU that are slower. Frequency isn't everything. So now we are at 1600 and let's say full pot. Before I wasn't able to do it. Now I'm booting at full pot. So probably it was a, a voltage issue that was preventing me to to do that maybe we can we can go up and up again so okay so let's see full pot full potting we like full potting Okay, fine. So we found that this is multi-core 58.50. Maximum FCLK was um, 1566. Okay, 
when I have those two values, at least I have an idea where I can go with my chip. Now we go to the last test. Single CCD and uh, SMT disabled and single core benchmarking. So it's not a bad chip. I'm half happy since I can do full pot and this is a good thing. I can run 3D benchmark with an LN2 frequency. I cannot place myself in the top position for the multi-threader like Cinebench, but until I find a better one, I have a good one for the 3D. And this is a good goal. Bullzoid, hi. Seems um, I have a good one for the thing that we want to do. It booted. I want to try again, just in case. So I'm still at uh, 1600 megahertz, maybe with a bit of voltage in the sock, like this. Maybe we can do full pot. Yep. Yes, it's working. Maybe it was just a training issue. So we are full pot, 1600 megahertz, which is okay. It's on a chip. Let's see if we go down a bit. Hmm. Nice. Now you should see the temperature going a bit down if I go down with the sock or if I, if I, if I crash. This is weird. Maybe I just need more sock to boot and I can bring it down later. Let me try a benchmark first. Do some all these. Yeah, still working. Okay, single core, single core. in the chat. Okay, full pot. We are still full pot. 1600 megahertz. I've seen okay. 59 here. Okay, let's see if we can do well i would like to have like 6.2 but this is probably a dream yes even six gigahertz is not enough so well this chip is not so good for single threaded thing um i can try to disable one ccd but uh, i think my best one is the second one and this is bad so
Okay, so now I'm going to disable one CCD, the SMT. And let's see if we can do some six gigahertz, but I don't think so. Okay, system is booting, 1600 FCLK, one CCD, I really want 6 gigahertz, my 5800X can do 6 gigahertz, and it's a pity that this beast cannot do that. The RAM, of course, is not tuned to do this benchmark, but it's just to see if we can run it at this frequency. Let's try 59.50. And more cold, obviously. Okay, so 5950, let's try a 4 million first, let's see in the chat what you're up to. Fifty-eight hundred x and RTX 2070 Super for Counter-Strike. Hell yes. It's a FPS machine. So if you do Counter-Strike, go for it. It's the fastest, uh, let's say, old engine CPU. Okay. So, well, I want 6 gigahertz badly. I like round, round numbers. Overall, this chip is not bad. I mean, fine tuning a bit. It can be even a top 10. Let's go for 6 gigahertz. No, I think it, there's a wall. No. No, a bit more voltage since it's single threaded and I can do that. But I think I cannot do the 32M. There's a new Benchmate, I'm going to try it. Okay, so it seems that it scales a bit more with 1.82 volts. I'm able to do single threaded at 6 gigahertz, which is nice. Okay, pretty nice. Uh, let's try 6.025. Let's see how far we can go. Sometimes because we have 
pores that are faster than others. Six point twenty-five. Uh, this is this is nice, even for single thread. Again, I cannot keep up with safe disk. That is an alien CPU, so I'm guess that I won't get any first position anytime soon. But I can compete. Let's try for M first. Six gigahertz at fifty megahertz. I don't think I can run the single thread for Cinebench. I can try later. But well, no, not today. It's long. Uh, in multi threading is fast, but in single threading is really long. So, okay, we have, um, we are climbing, that's good, that's really good, no, okay, 6 gigahertz and 50 megahertz, let's try at 32 M, let's see how it does, if I can pass uh, 32 M super PI with that frequency, I think it's pretty nice. Maybe I can fine tune the FCLK. I can gain like 33 megahertz or one step, maybe. So maybe with a bit of work, I can improve a bit the frequencies. Yeah, <laughs> it was very quick. This chip is a monster. This chip is a monster. It's super fast. But in my opinion, it's not the fastest in gaming, since I prefer the monolithic um, 5800X for gaming. <coughs> when I have to prepare a rig to play myself on my free time, or basically never, I will use the 58. I think the best combo so far that I played was 5800X and 6800XT liquid pool. This is my favorite gaming rig right now. Okay, now we have cold bug. How cool. I think my is mono CCD. Okay, so yeah, when we can boot again, I will run a 32M at uh, 6.50 and I read the chat in the meantime, it took like 3 5 minutes just to see if I can close it. So I would like to, to retry the AMD record, but again, safe disk is an alien CPU, I cannot compete with that with raw power, but I may try to tinker a bit with efficiency and memory tuning. Yeah, this BIOS is pretty buggy since I saw already various things that wasn't happening on the previous generation and even on my 5800X. So I think this, this BIOS is not so good with the dual CCD. Oh, 
how much Ellen Short I have left. Oh, well, I think I have five to ten liters left. Not a lot. Okay, last uh, test, I think, because for today, I think we discovered almost everything we have to. <coughs> okay, let's see if we can do this. Let me recharge first. Seems working. So, well, RAM are tuned really default, let's say. I just want to see if I can run the full benchmark without any crash. And at 6 gigahertz and 50 megahertz, I think I'm, I can be competitive for the podium. I don't think there's any CPU that high, except safe disk, of course. Still pushing here. Oh, there's another one. Nyasha, it is that name. 6.2 gigahertz super pi. Incredible. But, well, I can make the first, the second position right now, because the other one was at single stage. So let's see A and B wise. Still running, so far so good. I'm in the fourth position now, and um, yeah, maybe I can get the third position. Let's see. Yeah, I think if I pass 11 loop, I will probably be good to make the others. So. Plus, maybe when I try, when I try all the cores, there's always a core that goes a bit faster, even like 50 megas faster. So if I'm lucky enough, that is not the one that is running the test right now, I will probably go to 60.75 or 61. So I can play a bit there. I can try to give a bit more frequency since we have a bit of drop. So yeah, I think this the third position in SuperPi, 
I think is almost there. And if I can go to the second position, I can go to the first since they have similar frequency. But I can play with the frequency, some tricks, uh, like Waza. During the Waza can give you a lot of seconds. So I'm not dead yet. I can still try to compete for the first position. Okay, not bad. Anyway, my bad since I wasn't recharging. So this crashed because because of me. So now I want to try with four core to see if we have <clears throat> a bit more chance there. So um, reboot for core only and. Um, Let's see if I can, um, if I can go a bit higher. Yeah, well, and I don't want to tweak the memory now. This is long, and I I should have gone to bed like half an hour ago. Tomorrow I have to wake up early. Um, anyway, I don't want to make it too long. It's already long. So now let's see with four. So with four, I should have like less heat, mainly, and maybe the the best one of this first CCD is on the first four. So now it's just to get this to get to know the CPU a bit, but it's still a good one. Uh, I mean, I thought it was worse, honestly. It's not an alien super cheap, but it's not one bad either. So I'm pretty happy so far. Since I have a, a base to compete. And then with patient I can find a better one. That is good for gaming. Nice spam, by the way. Uh, it's good if you can tune the memory a bit, since 266 is a bit slow. Um, depends what you gain, but if you want a bit more juice out of that CPU, take the memory at least to 3200 megahertz, even if it's low on the pr primary timings. Manually tune the memory and, I don't know, 300 megahertz, uh, 30, uh, 300 megahertz, 3200 megahertz. So. Okay, let's go full pot. Let's see if you are lucky with um, only four cores. Um, because I don't want to, to finish all the nitrogen since tomorrow I want to do a quick test on the Kimping GPU. Just like one shot, one kill, if I can discover it a bit better, and then I will recharge. Okay, food pot. Let's try. Okay, let's push a bit more. Let's try the one. Okay, no, okay. Six gigahertz and 50 megahertz is the maximum we can get out of it even with four cores. So, well. 
Okay, guys, I think um, let's try uh, 3D Mark just to see because I have some nitrogen here and I want to see if I can run at 5.5, 5.7, something like this. So I want to enable again all the cores. We can try a quick uh, uh, fire strike, but I have to change the GPU. Hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't know if I can do that. Thank you. Well, first, uh, Okay, so um, what can we do? This one. Honestly, I would like to do the uh, 3D mark, but I have to power down and Let's try. So I'm going to try to use um 30 2080 Ti since the king ping is naked. Let's see if we can boot again. If not who cares? At least uh, I think we reached the goal of this session. Honestly, uh, we know the limit of the CPU that are okay. It's a CPU that can be fairly good for extreme overclocking, even if it's not the best. But um, well, it's definitely a good CPU for 3D. I want to see how far we can go in 3D, but I mean, for sure it is not the last of the line. Now, finger crossed and hope that it boots. <laughs> okay, nice. Prob support. When I power down and I turn the power back on at extreme temp, it's not the best thing to do. But, well, just one more last test before going to bed. Okay, we are back again. Yeah. Nice. Let's see if we can run uh, a fire strike at um, 5.6, maybe. So this is definitely a good settings. Now this is not the dark hero. This is the normal one. I would love to try the dark hero, but uh, as I told the chat before, since I I bought the 3090 King Ping, my budget is now zero. So, the Dark Hero will have to wait.
yes, don't bother or cheat the overclock the, the CPU if you don't have a good memory overclocker first. Okay, so I think I have to restart. We try a 3D, and I, I don't know if I can run the, the physics test only. Let's see. I hate when I spill liquid energy on my hand. Give me, see, this is the liquid nitrogen on your hand. It's like a, a burn, and it burns like hell. It's dangerous if you know what to do, it's fine. I mean, this last one minute and then you go away. Just don't put your hands on the container. But you can put the hands in the container, but you have to move it right away. If you wait like 10, 15 seconds, it's going to be bad. Okay, so let's try if I can do the physics test and the combined, okay. just to see the maximum frequency. Okay, let's uh, let's make a poll. What is the frequency you think? we can pass this benchmark. Right in the chat. 57, 56. Say a number. Uh, R15, we did the 5850. 5815 R15. But, um, Let's see. Before we do the combine, let's start the, with the physics only. So, okay, let's say 56, 57. What is the average? 56, 50. Seven gigahertz. <laughs> I, go to, I go to full pot. So don't worry about the temperature. if I don't have any PCI issue, because we don't know that yet. I shouldn't. Okay, 56, So, okay, no full pot with uh, the GPU on the first lane. Mm. 
the GPU is uh, 28 TTI. The 39 TTI Kingpin is naked, yeah. So I will use this one when I can, but not today. Since I don't have much LM2 and I don't want to waste time on <clears throat> mounting again the the uh, the AEO. So. Now I think is the is the PCI Express is a PCI Express issue, maybe or maybe it's just a restart needed to train. It may work again, okay, so. No, no, definitely not. Okay, let's keep it low, like uh, 56. I will probably to, yeah, to downgrade from PCIe Express 4 to 3, maybe. No, my best CCD is the second one. So, like I did in my video with um, the liquid cooling test, the best CCD is the second one, unfortunately. So, disabling CCD doesn't really give me anything. Let's try to set manually uh, PCI Express Gen 3. Hey, okay, so this thing. Maybe, maybe not. With 16 cores enabled, this thing is thirsty. It drink more than me. Um, uh, no, I don't do giveaways. Since uh, last time I did one, there was like uh, a thousand bots, and it's a waste of time. And the the chance that a real guy gets something is really small. Last time I had to like um, I had to like to to skip like hundred bots to get to talk to a real guy to to give one memory stick. Um, I'm not into giveaways. Sorry, but I prefer to spend one hour with you on Discord and help you tuning your system than do a giveaway because most of the time is a waste of money. I don't get nothing in return. Let's see if we can do full pot like this, or I will try to keep 182 maximum. Okay, so no, with um, the PCI X, the PCI first slot, we don't have um, the ability to go full pot. So I will stay below 180. Actually, we can. Okay, was um. Okay, full pot, nice. Let's do this five strike. Fifty-seven, fifty-seven.
Okay, let's see if we can take this home. At 57. And if we can, next live session will be the CPU and the Kingpin. Um, we can try to do some first strike. When the one that gave global points in our bot. So I want to try to make some score a bit. So we are doing five strike at 5700 megahertz. So 5.7 gigahertz. This is the combined test. Not too bad. So 57 is definitely possible. Um, well, see, so we can try to push a bit. Already 5700 megahertz uh, all core physic. It's not bad at all. Uh, we froze. Well, anyway, let me try with fifty fifty eight. Fifty nine. Let's try fifty nine. My nick on other bot is other numbers, so uh, in every video I have, there's my hardware bot profile, so you can easily find me. Let's try 59, just in case, and then when I finish this, we go home. So, so today was uh, already a nice run. Usually the first run like this with a new CPU is a bit boring. Um, but well, at the end we managed to get uh, full pot, even at 1600 megahertz. So Mm, good and more than average good CPU can be improved but so far so good let's see if we have a boot or not board is uh, sometimes good sometimes bad I think the BIOS is changing something uh, is training sometimes badly I don't know because it's not consistent and that usually is a BIOS issue. I mean, I saw almost every revision of the ASUS board from Crosshair 6 to this one. And sometimes they really, is like an epic fail. This one is not bad at all. The first BIOS for Zen 3 was rubbish. They, they made a good one, then another bad one. This one is so-so. Dragon is tired. Yeah, I think it, the dragon belly is now full. It was like one month since liquid nitrogen and it was pretty hungry. Okay, last run. No, okay, wow, the fuck. Okay, board is not cooperating anymore. So, what can I say? Okay, I'm not going to recharge since I need uh, liquid nitrogen for um, for the last GPU test that I'm going to do tomorrow before recharging. Let's see. Yeah. I have like five liters. This is enough for a couple of uh, one shot uh, with the kingpin. 
Okay, 170. What can we do? This thing, uh, I didn't try the FCLK with this chip, but um, the other 5950, I think I went stable, was um, 2066 stable. And I think I was able to bench something at 21, but um, I think this is actually worst for FCLK. But uh, I don't know. So. Not Roberto. Anyway, well, I don't know, guys. Um, I'm pretty tired. And um, now tomorrow I'm going to test, like, say, closed door testing since it will be really boring and uh, I have to mess a bit some things. So, first, I want to carefully test that GPU. Since for me, GPU is a bit um, trickier than CPU. The CPU, as you see, in a couple of hours, we understand the limit of a CPU as M3, at least. I have a lot of experience in M3. With that Kingpin, uh, I need a week to get, you know, uh, I was able to do like almost 5,500 megahertz, but I had a lot of issues and I didn't have the proper mounting as well. So I'm using a CPU pot for this GPU and well, is not uh, the best way to do it. I'm waiting from Kingpin the, the the mount for the icon. So usually I use this. So this one, the icon nine, but I only have the, the old generation mount. So I have to wait the adapter and uh, I'm waiting the adapter from Kingpin so a week maybe and in the meantime I will test um, yes I will test the the card with the the T-Rex but it's a bit messy I have to use a riser maybe it is not the proper way to do it since I'm not sure that the mounting is completely fine so it's not going to be a good live session. That's, that's it. And plus, I want to prepare the the, o, the OS first for the for the runs. This OS is like um, a standard OS that I use to benchmark World of Warcraft. So it's not optimized for extreme overclocking. Now I got the Kingpin from a local a local eShop. I was pretty lucky because I think I was doing F F five searching for a 3060 Ti and uh, the Kingpin popped up and well I placed the order and it went sold out so I think they, they had one and I got the only one I think it appears on the website I took it and the next day it was at my home so super lucky super lucky anyway usually I'm lucky with the components so that's how it goes <laughs> at least I don't know we have um, 132 well it's time to warm up a bit so I do some Cinebench just to warm up the CPU so I can dismantle today because I always try to to get it uh, dismounted and dried the same day to avoid uh, condensation inside the board because my Crosshair 7 got uh, some water in the trucks and I lost one memory channel. So my Crosshair 7 now is only single channel memory. I will have to clean it with an with, um, ultrasonic cleaner. But I don't know. I don't know if I can buy one and bring that board back to life. This is a good tool to warm up the CPU. Look at the temperature. I 
I can try Cinebench R20. Since it's, it's even. Okay. We don't need the shock voltage anymore. Look at the temperature now, it's a, it's a good CPU eater. Okay, I don't know, do you have anything to ask me? I will try to do some another live, maybe next Saturday, if I can have more liquid nitrogen and more... Um, and the, the voltage uh, sorted out for the Kingpin edition. To do some 3D. 3D are more fun than 2D in a live stream. Okay, so I'm bringing the board back to save voltages. I said I want to run. Uh, Extreme voltages below minus 100. Um, I prefer to use uh, four uh, single rank. Uh, sometimes helps. Uh, I don't have any good B die dual rank. This is something that I have to fix. But I want to buy a good one. So I don't have time and money to bin a dual rank kit right now. And yes, as Planker said, are pretty expensive. So, but I think that four kit will do a pretty good job anyway, since dual rank are also more difficult to tune. So I, I have to make some tests and to see if it's worth going dual rank and lesser the timing a bit. Not sure. Okay. Let's warm it up. It's hard if you go above 3800 megahertz. Actually, with this board and this chip, I can do 3800 megahertz, uh, one 1900 uh, FCLK with four sticks. It run perfectly fine with the same times timings that I'm using uh, a single kit. So I didn't test deep bench, but in gaming, like normal gaming, I mean, if you are at 3800 megahertz with good sub timings, you don't even need to put uh, two kits. To you don't see the difference. But Lumi tested it with the Intel. AMD is a bit different. Okay. But I think now the thing is getting boring. So I think I'm going to close the live stream and let the board uh, warm up. With no pressure so yeah well guys let's um, yeah i think i'm going to schedule for next saturday if i have the mounting plate and everything as always check check my discord check my twitter i use a lot of twitter so i will keep you posted if i have the bracket and i get the card working properly and we may do some 3d runs next saturday Probably will be a long run since we we can try to to do I think Port Royal, Five Strike, Time Spy, uh, a bit of everything, and uh, maybe maybe since I have true GPU pot, I can try as well to to mount the pot on the 6800 XT and see 
if we can have a comparison doing extreme with both. Um, that's it. So I will try to to prepare something fun. And now time to go to bed. So thank you guys for being here. As always, good support from the chat. But stay tuned. Uh, I have a lot of going on here. I will try to to show you as much as possible, and we will try to have fun as well in the process. Good night, guys. Bye. Have fun and stay safe.